Hi, welcome to the Applause Series. My name is Donna Fitzgerald. I am a member of the Ego and Cultural Council. We are proud to bring this series to you. If you enjoy it and would like to give a donation, any amount would do, we would appreciate that. And you can do so by visiting our website, www.agawamcc.org. Thank you. Take care. Be safe. Enjoy the show. Good evening. Buenas tardes. Este es Criollo Clásico Trio. This is the Criollo Clásico Trio, and we are very happy to be here with you. And uh, it's been two years since we've performed, so this is a very special event for us, too, to be able to come out and pl play live music again. Uh, we're going to start with a piece of mine. This one is titled San Sebastián. And it's dedicated to a street in Old San Juan where there's all the music clubs. And in it, this piece, you can hear music coming out of the, of the um, different clubs, everything from salsa to some Brazilian music to a little bit of flamenco. So I composed this piece, and it's titled San Sebastián. Okay. Thank you. 
thank you so much. That was San Sebastián. And this is another composition of mine, and this one is from Ahmed's first CD as a flute player. It's called Flute Soul, and the piece is titled Jambele, which is a barrio in Guaynabo, Puerto Rico, where I used to go riding bike and picking guayabas with my friends. So this is dedicated to Ahmed. He's gonna, it's on his uh, flute soul album, Jambele. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, we're going to bring out an instrument that we like to perform on. This is called the Cuatro, and it's the national instrument of Puerto Rico. And uh, it's usually performed, you don't really play it as a solo instrument. It's usually performed with a guitar. Mm -hmm. And in the mountains, you'll hear a guido or a bongo usually backing up the Cuatro player. So I'm going to take advantage of that I have a guitar and a also a bongo player. And we're going to perform a piece. This one is titled... Azure. Yeah. Think about the 
2004. This one was made in, up in the mountains of Puerto Rico, Corozal, Puerto Rico. So the wood, these tropical instruments always have a hard time when they when they get off the island because of the humidity, right? So they, the, the, tr the tuning always goes a little bit off. But and of course, New England is a wonderful place for consistent weather. Right. That this worked like out really well. And then it has 10 <laughs> strings. I wanted to mention that. Yeah, it does. Have, it has 10 strings, which makes it a lot harder to tune. They're double. If you play like a steel string guitar, the, the six string, the 12 string guitar, it's something similar. So there we go. And this one is titled Azure.
very famous composer for the quadrant in Puerto Rico, and his name is Maestro Ladi. And we like to do one of the pieces from the folklore, which is the music that's written precisely for the for this instrument, the cuatro, the mountain music of the interior of Puerto Rico, which is where we had most of the settlers from Spain. You know, in Puerto Rico, around the sugar, the sugar cane was around the coastal area, which is where we have more of the African influence, Bomba Plena, Loisa, all these towns that had more of the African slaves that lived around because of the coastal region of the sugarcane um, fields. But the mountain settlers up in the mountains of Orocovis, Aibonito, uh, Sidra, Corozal, Naranjito, all these were more European. So you had many Spanish, but you also had many settlers from Italy, many Irish. There were uh, all kinds of combinations, Italians up in the mountains. So uh, the Hibaro, or the country person up there, were called Hibaros. In Cuba, they're called Guajiros. But in Puerto Rico, we, we label them as our hibaros. So we're going to do a piece from El Maestro Ladi, who's probably the more pro prolific of the composers for this instrument. El Joropo de Ladi. And this one he composed, ironically, he would take rhythms from all Latin America. And this one he's using uh, the rhythm of the Joropo, which is very typical of Venezuela and El, um, Mexico and there are different 6 8 rhythms. So un Joropo del Maestro Ladi. <laughs> This next one is also from the Hibaro tradition, and it's called Marianda. So we're going to do a little bit of this one. It has a little chorus into it. So it's some of the mountain type of singing that we do in the Hibaro music. Marianda.
los hermanos de nacer en esta islita y de ser peporincano. by a friend of mine and it's titled Mujeres de la Puna and in this piece we're going to do more of the Andean style of music from Latin America Mujeres de la Puna la Puna's el altiplano the high mountainous section okay me presta la guitarra Mujeres de la Puna. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mujeres de la Puna. going to sneak something in here. It's called British Invasion, so I think you probably have an idea what this is about. <laughs> now, what happened was, before I played the instruments of Latin America, incredibly, I started off as a rock drummer. I was really into rock and roll music. Uh, my father had been in the military, so I was in Europe at the uh, time of the Beatles and stuff like that. And uh, we sent my dad off to, my sister and I sent dad off to the PX, and we, we were living in, uh, which is in France, Verdun, France. L later we moved to Germany, Swybrook, but in France we said, dad, there's this band out there, they're called the Beatles, and you got to get us that album. So he, oh yeah, okay, so he went to the PX, and he came back at his dinner time, and he opened this bag, and he threw it on the table, and my sister and I jumped on it, and it said the Kinks. <laughs> 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 and we were, so, we were like, yay, no. And then, but we loved it. We put it on, and it had uh, You Really Got Me, which is, you know, not, not too bad. We said, well, you know, and my dad said, they're all got long hair, it's all the same stuff, what are you complaining about? <laughs> So that was, was a funny story uh, about the Beatle era. You know, my dad came in with the wrong album. But anyway, I wrote something for my students, for my guitar students. This was actually a little medley I did for the kids I had at Sullivan School in Holyoke. And uh, we, for the, oh, yeah, there you go. There are a couple of our teachers there. And there's the one who gave me my French fries. Hey, Laurie. <laughs> she fed me every day. In Puerto Rico, we have a saying. We, we, we use the diminutive for everything. Chiquitito, dame un poquito, everything. So I would go to Laurie, and, and she would say, what do you want? I said, well, I have... You know, a poquito fr just a couple of French fries, and she would actually put two French fries on my plate. <laughs> it's a language, it's a culture thing. We we minimize everything. She's like, she was very no. You said two. There you go. <laughs> so anyway, I'd have to beg her. So anyway, we're gonna do a piece, and this uh, I, I wrote this one for my students. It was a medley for them to play, and then one day we were at a, I think at a wedding, and I, we played it, and people liked it. Uh, Peter Noon, uh, uh, Newman of the uh, the band Fat was with us at a place, and he loved it, and he said, you guys should play that, and we did, and uh, we did it at the Quadrangle, remember the guitar thing at the Springfield Library. Yep. So ever since, we, we kind of included, and it's called British Invasion, so we hope you like it. <laughs>
Thank you, thank you. I made them do some rock. They didn't want to play rock, but now they're, they're pretty good. Nice playing Jethro Tull and, uh, and Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. And actually, it was very funny. Uh, we had a little, uh, we got a get together after all that time. And I, I played, I said, Ahmed, listen to this little thing I'm playing on the quattro. I saw it on a TikTok video. And, and I played it back to him now. I used to really be in the sports, you know, I mean, big time, you know, oh, but I kind of dropped man. out after Michael Jordan. You know, he kept on with the NBA and whatever. So I played it. said, li listen to this. He said, he said uh, we can't learn a new piece. And I played it for him. Well, no. <laughs> I started we had rehearsed for like two hours, and I was, you know, I, I, I had, you know, got, got to shower the kids, got to go to bed, got to go to work tomorrow. I said, I just want to see this new song. Yeah, I'm I like, just want to check it. It's I even for out. the show. You know, it's not for the show. You're just pushing another song for the, he's always pushing all that. Yeah, I'm always trying, I'm always trying dad, to push new, new things on them, and they, they're like, ah, we got enough music, you know, and I'm always looking for new things. So anyway, this was a new piece, and I wrote it out because I knew if it was written, at least he would try to read through it. So, uh, but anyway, I played, I played the beginning riff of it, and then he goes, wait a minute, I know what that is. You know, I say, you've heard this before? He says, yes. <laughs> and he says, said, everybody knows what that is. I said, well, I just saw I was this girl on TikTok dancing, and everybody was playing. He said, that's the theme to the. That's basically the song they play for the Boston Celtics where yeah. they got to get a really big basket. For like the last 10, 15 years, he's like, no way. He's like, yeah. So I didn't know it was a drop. I mean, that's the fight song. So I wrote, yeah, I wrote, I wrote out a song from the Dropkick Murphys, and I didn't know. And he, he was all excited. And he said, everybody in Boston da, plays da, that da, in the da, pubs da, da, when, da, 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 when the Lakers, you know, when they play Celtics. So I didn't know that. But anyway. I, and last time I said we want to play, he said no, not yet. So, but we're gonna we we have we have two beautiful Irish tunes that we we're gonna add with the quattro, and we we hope to have them for the next program ready. So the, he already checked it once, and it sounded very nice. But the th you know what the hard part is that we have to do the drunken uh, sailor thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get these guys to shout. You know they're gonna. I didn't think I'm it was appropriate yeah, for tonight. I have to bring so them down to Holyoke on St. Patrick's Day and bring them into one of the pubs, and they'll get they'll get the spirit for it. But it's that one and another song. So we have two beautiful new Irish tunes that we didn't have them for today, but hopefully he'll learn it for next time. And now you know that uh, th they're pretty famous in Boston and in all of New England. <laughs> now we like to do a piece from the tradition of um, the Andes, and this is one is called Chincha, which is a region in Peru where you have the black influ influence, uh, Peru Negro. They, they also, you know, all the countries in Latin America have the, a tradition, Brazil, um, Cuba, Puerto Rico, strong traditions of, of African music, and every one of them has changed. We have bomba and plena in Puerto Rico. In, in Cuba, they have obviously la rumba, timba, uh, you have um, uh, batucadas, you, uh, yeah, yeah, all kinds of Peru Negro, they have many candombles. So we're going to play this one right. And this is a version of dedicated to that, and it's called Chincha, which is the region where this happens. Thank you. 
Thank you. Eso es un festejo de Perú. Es un festejo. It's the name of the rhythm. If you like that rhythm, I will recommend listening to this mildly known artist. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Tony Sugar, um, he's from Peru, and he's a very popular tropical artist right now. But being from Peru and having grown up in the folklore of that music, because he's very popular for his salsa and covering songs by Michael Jackson and Bruno Mars and things of that nature. But he is from Peru, and he knows his, his music. And so he's always found innovative and, and uh, modern ways to do festejo. So if you like listening to festejo, He's a great artist to listen to that's recording that music. Uh, well, now, contemporary, I guess. And Landos, correct. So, uh, so he's telling me to present it, so I'm going to go my own way. So when we, were, when we were children, the first album that my dad did, he was, he was a musician in Puerto Rico for a lot of artists, and he had a, an amazing career going. But when we moved here from Puerto Rico, he, he noticed there wasn't that much. This is back in the late 80s. There wasn't much of a, of a music scene here for Latino musicians and not a lot. So he, he decided, you know, I got to do my own thing. And so he started out. Uh, so what he did with the Cuatro, which was very important, was to bring it out of his folklore music and use it in classical music, jazz, rock, and kind of the thing that we do. We, 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 we expand what we do. And there was another gentleman in Puerto Rico at the same time in 1990, 1991, that introduced the cuatro to jazz or the other way around. And, that, and they both came out at the same time. They were a big hit. And we do know his name is Pedro Guzman. And he's a friend of ours. And he's a, an amazing musician still performing on the island. So we always expand and like to play music from from different backgrounds and Pedro being one of our friends we picked this song and what right. this is is a fusion yep. between what is an aguinaldo folklore it's rhythm aguinaldo, from yeah. Puerto Rico. He mixed it up with something from Spain. From Spain, Sevilla. So we have a mixture of, <laughs> at the end it turns into Puerto Rican um, aguinaldo but it starts off with a rumba flamenca. So we're going to do aguinaldo sevillano from Sevilla, Spain. <laughs>
vamos a hacer bailando y nos vamos. Bailando. Bailando y nos vamos. We're going to do a final tune, and this one is titled Bailando. Oh, there you go. All right, that, that'll help him. Because Ahmed, we're, we're going to sing something. We, we never sing, so we're going to do a little singing. Freedom, and freedom. And this one is titled Bailando, and Ahmed can tell you a little bit more about it, right? Huh? No, Bailando just means dancing. It's a song that was made popular. It's actually by a composer, Desemer Bueno, from Cuba. And um, we have a good friend who explained this to us, that for a lot of musicians, great musicians and composers in Cuba, a way for them to get their music out out into the world because of the political situation is sometimes when a great a big artist comes or they get to meet them in Europe or something like that is to essentially you know hey like I, I want to get on tour with you here's a couple compositions essentially um, that you can popularize but I'll get a chance to popularize my other compositions so this is what this happens with uh, artists like Pitbull artists like a and Enrique Iglesias, which popularized this song, and many other pop artists, that there's a lot of great music out there, and I just want to recognize Queso Viene de Cuba, and some of the composers, so I want to recognize that Semer Bueno has written quite a few hits that have been big hits here, but they have gone under someone else's name. Mm -hmm. uh, so this song is called Bailandos by this, you guys will know it, I assume, I assume you've heard it, and I just want you to know that Semer yeah, Bueno de Cuba. Very different from what we do, but we once put together this pasito, and, and, and uh, we were rehearsing at home, and our neighbor came dancing in. The funny thing, we were doing a video, and she didn't know she came out in the video. <laughs> and it was Hilarious. perfect. She came in right for the chorus that says, pasito, pasito, yeah. suave, suavecito, yeah. It was, it was summer, and we were painting. We were actually painting a room, and we took a break, and I said, Med, this is a song, and we started doing this pasito, the whole song. And as we're doing it, a neighbor heard us, and she came running, and then she didn't know we were filming. <laughs> we were filming, and she started dancing outside in the, in the balcony, and, we, and when we'd forget the lyrics, she'd open the window and, and tell us the words. She would sing with us. And we eventually going to put we were cracking up because she didn't know we knew she was being filmed you know so that was a we were we were laughing i'm eventually he didn't want me to put it on on social media at the time this is years yeah. ago so when it's popular we because we were in like shorts we were like all painted you know we yeah. were like and painting, so you know. it will eventually you will It'll eventually get to see it on social yeah. media i just gotta come up there. with a good enough yeah. story maybe let yeah. my children back there i want to say hi to sebastian he he to amo. i love you guys this is like their first concert <laughs> before they were like super little they don't even remember that so we'd like to thank everyone here. They've been I'll so kind to us, them. Bob, and everyone who's been so nice uh, organizing this event for the community, and we're very happy to be back. So everyone here uh, doing the sound and the obviously in the video, we'd like to thank you all and you for coming. And we do have some of our CDs. We have our latest CD is Caribe Festivo, which is our seven-piece band, which includes uh -huh. Venezuelan musicians, uh -huh. Cuban yeah. musicians, and us. And we have that album out. And the previous one is uh, two guitars, me with a professor from Berkeley. His name is Claudio Ragazzi. He's a she's film she's composer. Uh, he is a professor of film composition, but he tours the world with Astor Piazzolla, Yo-Yo Ma, with a uh, great guitarist. And we hadn't met, we hadn't been together in 28 years, and he came over and visited us, and we put out a new album. And that's those things happened during the pandemic, so we're just starting to get them out now. And, of course, we have our 20th CD, so we have a collection there. We do have two children's CDs. We have three Christmas CDs. We have one classical music city. If you love Vivaldi, Bach, Beethoven, all that. And what else we have? The rock two kids. CD? We have. Oh, I, I'm, I'm the only rock guy who put out his first CD. I was, I was 60 when I retired from teaching. I said I'm going to do that rock album I've never done because I've recorded like 40 albums for different people. So I did write 10 songs and I did play the drums and my electric guitars and I finally did it for me. Ironically, my very first gig was playing a Ginger Baker solo, Toad, by Ginger Baker for a radio commercial in Puerto Rico. So. So, yeah, so anyway, we're going to do Bailando, and thank you very much. Llenando 
vacío subiendo y bajando Bailando, 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 bailando Contigo por dentro me va enloqueciendo, me va saturando Con tu química, tu vida, la mente no comía La cerveza y el tequila y tu boca con la mía Ya no puedo más, ya no puedo más, ya no puedo más esa melodía, tu color, tu fantasía y tu filosofía, mi cabeza está vacía, ya no puedo más, ya no puedo más, yo quiero estar contigo, vivir contigo, bailar contigo, tener contigo una noche loca, y besar tu boca, yo quiero estar contigo, vivir contigo, bailar contigo, tener contigo una noche Thank you, thank you, thank you. 